Perfect. Perfect. Hey everybody, Tribe Nursing here. Today we're going to be covering the basics of how to read an EKG. So before we actually read an EKG, uh, we need to understand the basic concepts before jumping into reading six second EKG strips. So if you like this video, make sure to subscribe and share. Also something that I'm doing new is that I am posting handmade study sheets on etsy.com. There you can use my handmade notes to follow along with my lectures. Um, so with that being said, let's get started. Okay, so before we actually get into the actual EKG segment of breaking it down, um, I think it's extremely important to understand how an impulse is sent. So let's go ahead and work on that. The heart is the one organ in the body that has an electrical system. And what that electrical system does, it helps with contraction of the ventricles and relaxation of the atrium. So this is how the impulse occurs. The impulse begins at the SA node. The SA node is what actually initiates the impulse. It initiates the impulse at a rate of 60 to 100 beats per minute. That pulse is then sent to the AV node. The AV node is considered to be the gatekeeper. The reason it's known as the gatekeeper is because it regulates the impulse that is sent from the SA node to the AV node. So what it's going to do is that it's going to pause that impulse so the atria could contract and relax. After the AV node has regulated the impulse, that impulse is now sent to the bundle of hiss, where it is regulated at 40 beats to 60 beats per minute. The bundle of hiss branches off into a left segment into a right segment. So a left branch and a right branch. And it's shown here. Here's the left branch. Here's the right branch. After the, after the bundle of hiss has received the impulse, it is then sent to the Purkinje fibers. The Purkinje fibers are located within the ventricles and this is where the ventricles contract at 20 to 40. So let's reiterate what I've said. So the SA node initiates the impulse. The AV node is known as the gatekeeper, regulates the impulse. That impulse is now sent to the bundle of hiss where there's two branches, the left and right. And that impulse is now sent to the Purkinje fibers where contraction occurs within the ventricles. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into the EKG segment of how each wave occurs. So for example, it begins with the P wave. When the first impulse is sent from the SA node to the AV node, this is when the P wave occurs. The P wave is known as atrial depolarization or contraction. As I mentioned, the SA node sends an impulse to the AV node, therefore we get this P wave. We get that P wave segment. We have something known as the PR interval. The PR interval is located between the P wave and the QRS segment. So what that is, it is the start of the QRS complex. So what's going to happen within this interval is that the AV node is going to pause so the atria could relax. And this is the segment over here. All right, so now we have the QRS complex. So the QRS complex is known as ventricular depolarization. I'm going to go ahead and mention that there's depolarization and then there's repolarization. Depolarization means contraction. Repolarization means relaxation. So what's going to happen within the QRS complex is that the ventricles are, gonna, are going to contract. So that means the atria. Now keep in mind that the atria are going to relax and repolarize but it's going to be hidden within the QRS complex. So the ventricles are going to be contracting here, but the atrium is going to be relaxed at this point. So we have a contraction, and then at the same time, the atria are relaxing. So the QRS complex then leads to the T wave. The T wave is known as ventricular repolarization. And as, and as I mentioned before, repolarization means relaxation. So after the impulse has been sent throughout the heart, when it, as soon as it reaches the T wave, the ventricles could finally relax. And then it starts all over again, back at the SA node sending the impulse. Also, it's important to know that within the QRS complex, this is all occurring within the apex. Also, something that's important that I forgot to mention is that the SA node, also known as the pacemaker of the heart. If the SA node is not working, there's nothing to initiate that process of electrical activity. 
So if this is not working, that means sometimes a patient will need to have a pacemaker placed in. A pacemaker is a device that is going to help initiate the impulse so it can be sent to the AV node and is implanted by a surgeon. So our heart works as an electrical pump. And if the electricity gives out for any kind of reason, the SA node to the AV node to the bundle of his to the Purkinje fibers, therefore there's not gonna be any contractions or relaxation. So what happens from there? Well, I think of the heart as an electrical system. If there is no more electricity, we need a backup generator. What would be considered to be our backup generator? Well, it is considered to be our compensatory mechanisms. So let me explain. We have something known as the autonomic nervous system. So what's a part of the autonomic nervous system is your SNS and your PNS. Let's talk about the sympathetic nervous system first. The sympathetic nervous system is going to activate due to bradycardia, due to a low heart rate. Once your body detects that you have a low heart rate, the sympathetic nervous system will kick on. Therefore, what's going to happen is that it's going to send out a neurotransmitter known as epinephrine. And that neurotransmitter is going to be sent to a couple receptors known as beta-1 and beta-2. The beta-1 receptor is associated with the heart. So how I like to think about it is one, one heart. So what's gonna happen from there is that basal constriction is going to occur. And from there, we're gonna see some signs and symptoms. Now, on the other hand, when epinephrine is sent to the beta-2 receptors, it's going to be sent to the lungs. So how we like to think about that is that there's two lungs, meaning there's a left lung and a right lung. When that neurotransmitter is sent to your beta-2 receptors, it's going to cause bronchodilation. For example, if you take in medication such as albuterol, it's going to help bronchodilate. If you take in medication such as labetalol or metoprolol, it's going to help, it's going to cause vasoconstriction. And what that's going to do is it's going to prevent sympathetic nervous system stimulation. Well, on the other hand, we have the PNS. So this is triggered by a high heart rate known as tachycardia. So what's going to happen from there is that the neurotransmitter involved with this situation is known as acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is going to be sent to your cholinergic receptors. And from there, it's going to decrease the heart rate. So something else that we can do to help decrease the heart rate of a patient who is really tacky is that we can advise them to bear down, meaning we want them to get into a position where, where it's going to stimulate their, their vagus nerve and decrease their heart rate. So by stimulating the vagus nerve, it's going to decrease their heart rate. Okay, so this is the steps for EKG interpretation. There's a few steps associated with it. So the first step is to determine the rate. So, so we want to count the R intervals that's associated with that, with that strip. So for example, I drew an illustration. So let's count it together. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're counting the peak. So typically we have a Q down here. Here's our R and here's our S. It's the QRS complex where we're counting the R interval. So again, one, two, three, four, five, six. We take that number and multiply by 10. And now we have 60 beats per minute. That's the first step. Second step, we want to determine whether or not it is regular or irregular. So, um, so pretty much are the R intervals the same between each QRS complex? Okay, so I went ahead and drew an illustration here. So here's our first QRS complex. Here's our second QRS complex. So uh, in between, you can tell that it's equally separated from one another. So therefore, it is regular. With this illustration here, it shows that with this QRS complex and this QRS complex, it shows that it's equal. But when you compare it to this, to this one over here that, that's really separated, it's showing that it's irregular. So this strip would be considered to be irregular. All right, so third step, you want to determine the rhythm. Is there a P wave for every QRS complex? So is there a P wave for every QRS complex that's on that strip? So that's something to keep in mind while reading an EKG strip. So is the T wave normal on each strip? So is it dip or inverted or is it peaked? So for example, here's, here's a normal T wave 
and here's a T wave that's considered to be dipped and inverted. So if it's dipped or inverted, typically it's associated with hypokalemia, uh, meaning the patient has very low potassium. With this example, on the bottom, the T wave is peaked, meaning that the patient may have high potassium, hyperkalemia. You want to determine the rate, you want to determine is it regular or irregular, and then you want to determine the rhythm. Is there a P wave for every QRS and how does a T wave look like? So something to remember for the intervals for PRI, it's going to be 0.12 to 0.2 seconds. For the QRS complex, it's going to be 0.08 to 0.12 seconds. And for the QT interval, it's going to be 0.36 to 0.44 seconds. Uh, that is the end of the video. Um, I hope you liked it. If you did, make sure to give it a like and, and subscribe if you haven't and share it to your friends uh, for those who are learning EKGs. Within the next video, I'm going to be actually interpreting actual six second strips. So uh, be on the lookout for that. Um, you'll also have the choice to go on Etsy.com. I'll leave a link in the description uh, so you can follow along with my YouTube lectures if you choose to. Um, and with that being said, thank you and have a good one.